everyone so in this video I'm going to talk about competition and monopoly some in insights from calculus and I'm going to show our percentage markup elasticity formula for our monopoly so the starting point to maximize profit the firm has to answer two questions what's going to be the optimal output and then whether to produce it all so profit pi profit as a function of quantity is equal to revenue as a function of quantity minus cost as a function of quantity so what the firm's going to try to do then it's going to determine what's the optimal output. So this is gonna be the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, right? We'll take the derivative of this thing. d pi dq gives us dr dq, that's marginal revenue, minus dc dq, that's marginal cost. And then we'll find the associated quantity and then decide at that quantity, is price bigger than average variable cost? If so, that's the quantity that the, that the firm would produce. All right, so here is, here is our graph of profit. And we're thinking about there's a situation where you know profit is going to be downward opening, and for smaller quantities we have a situation where profit is increasing in output. So as we increase output, do we want to produce this amount? No, because this is upward sloping. If we were to produce more, profits are rising. What about once we get here? Now d pi dq is zero. We're at the maximum. Would we want to produce out here? No, because now d pi dq is negative. And so we're actually increasing our output is now lowering profits. So we, we want to find the optimal, kind of in the middle, where we're maximizing profits, where d pi dq is equal to zero. Go ahead and solve for the q star. Solve, that'll give us our first order condition for a maximum, and it'll find the associated quantity. All right, so that's sort of the general idea behind profit maximization. Let me show us something thinking about perfect competition. So with short run competitive profit maximization, what ends up happening is we have the entire market. Now I mean for this to go through the to go through the, the crossing point, to actually go through the equilibrium. I meant for this, label this as the equilibrium price, this is supposed to go through here, so sorry. Because it faces a horizontal demand curve, the demand curve is horizontal at the market price, the competitive firm can sell as many units of the output as it wants at whatever is the market price. Where's the market price coming from? Well, from the crossing of the equilibrium between the market demand and market supply is the entire market. And then the individual has these cost curves, marginal cost, average cost, average variable cost, and it compares the market price, its marginal revenue, its demand, which is horizontal at the market, market price to its cost curves to determine where to produce. In this picture, price crosses marginal cost here, so the firm would want to produce this output, and then it would look and see at that price or at that output, here's the average variable cost. Yeah, price is higher than average variable cost. And so we'd produce in the short run, and then yeah, price is bigger than average cost at that quantity. This is the quantity. All right, so to maximize profit, well, we're taking d pi dq, which is going to give us the derivative is going to give us dr dq minus dc dq, as I mentioned. Well, so for so here I'm thinking about like profit maximization in the in in the case of our competitive market. We're going to set our derivative equal to zero. Dr dq is marginal revenue, but for the competitive market, marginal revenue is just price. So I'm going to write price here. Dc dq is marginal cost. So this gives us the outcome: price is equal to marginal cost. All right, but what about if price crosses the marginal cost at two places? This is interesting. So what if we have marginal cost upward sloping like that, or U-shaped, and we have two places where price equals marginal cost? What do we do? Well, the Econ 101, like the principles of micro argument is, suppose we were producing Q1, would we want to produce a little bit more? Well, yeah, we would, because this price is our marginal revenue, this line is our marginal cost, and for a quantity over here, the market price is higher than the marginal cost. So we'd want to produce one more unit, and that's true all the way up to here. Now price is equal to marginal cost at this point. Would we want to produce beyond that point out here? No, because here's the marginal revenue. It's this horizontal line. I've got three dashes. Here's the marginal cost. It's higher. So you would want to stop at Q2. That'll maximize profit. So, But we can look at this with calculus. A firm maximizes profit by selecting the optimal quantity. The first order necessary condition is found by differentiating the profit equation, right? So we'll take d pi dq, that'll give us dr dq, dc dq, and when we differentiate the right-hand side, set that equal to zero. Now the sufficient condition for the max, take a second, or, take a second derivative, is gonna give us this thing. So I'm gonna differentiate again, so this becomes 
uh, d2 pi dq squared, and then d2 dr <laughs> dq squared, right? So I'm taking the second derivative, I'm redifferentiating everything. The better way to see this is what I wrote down here. So now I've got this right here is marginal revenue. This is marginal cost, right? The first derivative is marginal revenue minus marginal cost. Let's just take the second derivative. That's going to be the derivative of marginal revenue minus the derivative of marginal cost. And that's the way to think about it. So that's why I wrote it here. Derivative of marginal revenue divided by deriv or de minus derivative of marginal cost. Well, the derivative of marginal revenue, well, we can move this around. So let's do that first. So our condition for a sufficient condition is the derivative of marginal revenue is going to be smaller than the derivative of marginal cost. That's what this manipulation did. All right, but interestingly, we are assuming we're in a perfectly competitive market. So marginal revenue is a market price. It's a constant. The derivative of a constant is zero, right? Deriv the competitive market, uh, the change in marginal revenue is going to be zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. And then this line right here, we can interpret it's just telling us derivative of marginal cost has to be positive. Well, that just means marginal cost is upward sloping. So the sufficient condition for the competitive firm to be maximizing profit is for marginal cost to be upward sloping at the optimal quantity. And we have this here at Q2, right? At Q1, marginal cost is down sloping. At Q2, marginal cost is up sloping. Both satisfy the necessary condition for a maximum. Marginal revenue equals mar or price equals marginal cost. Only this one su satisfies both the necessary and sufficient condition. All right, and then here is my comment. Note, marginal revenue is bigger than marginal cost between Q1 to Q2, so we would have wanted, we would have wanted to continue producing anyway, even if we hadn't uh, done this exercise with calculus. All right, so now we'll think about monopoly. So for the monopoly's profit maximization situation, we'll begin with a monopoly's inverse demand. Monopoly's inverse demand gives us the price it's getting from selling a given quantity. Right, P of Q. This price, P of Q, is the monopoly's average revenue for a given quantity. Why is it average revenue? Because you're taking, so you're, you're taking, uh, in the competitive market, marginal revenue is just the market price. In the monopoly case, in order to determine the, the marginal revenue, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, um, it's going to have the same vertical intercept, twice the slope as the ordinary demand curve. But what's going to end up happening is you're setting a single price, and you're setting um, and you're setting that price equal to uh, you're setting the price equal to the price that corresponds to where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And then looking, I wonder if I've got this built out here. You can see you've got um, so yeah, so revenue. Here's the here's the easier way to see why it's uh, here, how why is it mar why is it average revenue? We'll look at so if we have revenue as price times quantity and then divide that by quantity, that's revenue divided by quantity's average revenue, that's P of Q. That's just, I should have just said that initially. All right, so here's the marginal revenue. That's gonna be dr dq, right? So here is original revenue, it was P of Q times Q. So marginal revenue is dr dq. If I actually look at that derivative though, it's gonna be dp of Q uh, times Q dq. And then over here, it's gonna be dp of Q uh, times Whoops. So I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have for my derivative I'm gonna have marginal revenue is equal to dr uh, drdq, and then I'll just do it here. So it'll be an application of the product rule essentially. We got to differentiate this thing, and so it's gonna be the derivative of the first part. So that's gonna be that's gonna be d p of q dq times this part comes along for the ride. Then the derivative of the second times the first, so that's gonna be dq dq times p of q. Oh, this is, here's the problem, is I've got this, this doesn't wanna, so I was looking ahead. Um, this doesn't, we don't want, we don't want this d here. That's the problem. We just want a p of q. Whoops, I wonder if I can move this over. Yeah, we don't want that d there. This is what we want for our derivative, so um, yes, this is price or average revenue, this is just one. All right, good radio. Ben. All right, so this part right here is the slope of the demand curve, slope of the demand curve times the number of units, right? dp, dq is slope of actually inverse demand curve. This right here is the price, the average revenue times, well, times one. At a given positive quantity, monopoly's marginal revenue is less than price or average revenue, right? The monopoly's marginal revenue lies below the inverse demand curve. So let's a little, look a little bit more closely at what's going on. 
So marginal revenue, uh, MR of Q is PQ times DQ DQ plus DP DQ times Q, right? That was our line from right up here, marginal revenue. So this is marginal revenue is equal to this stuff. I'm gonna write this more elegantly here, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, this goes to one, so that's just P. This is this, that's this right here, DP DQ. So my marginal revenue before I do any further manipulation can be MR of Q is equal to price plus DP DQ times Q. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just kind of stare at this and like, wait a second, I can relate this to elasticity. And if I do that, I need to generate my elasticity formula. So I'm gonna talk about that first. Elasticity is percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price. Well, if we're looking at it like a calculus percentage change, right, calculus version, we're going to want like dq over q divided by dp over p. And if you write that out, and if you do that manipulation, it actually simplifies down to being dq over, it just multiplied the reciprocal, right? Dividing a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. You get dq dp times p over q. And so this is the calculus version of price elasticity of demand. I've got a video where I talk about the, the calculus price elasticity of demand formula. I talk about this in greater depth. So you can go find that. You could search real quick on my channel and then I'll, I'll do sort of a walkthrough of that. But the quick version is like, literally the percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price is gonna be represented by dq dp times p over q. All right, so I wanna generate that in this statement I've got here. I'm looking, I've got, wait a second, dp dq, I've got q. What if I made this like over p? All right, so that's gonna, that's gonna be what I'm gonna to try to work towards. And I can do this here. How can I get a P here? Well, let me multiply by one written cleverly. So that's what I did. Notice this stuff, P plus DP DQ times Q becomes P plus DP DQ times Q times P over P, which boils down to P plus DP DQ times Q over P times P. I can factor out the price. So it's gonna be price times the quantity of one plus DP DQ times Q over P. But wait, dp dq times q over p is the reciprocal of our elasticity, dq dp times p over q. So I'm gonna write this here in reciprocal notation. I'm gonna write this as price times the, the quantity of one plus dq, the, the inverse of the quantity, dq dp times p over q. All right. And then I'm just gonna replace that inverse, uh, recognizing that this is the reciprocal of elasticity. So now my formula becomes price times the quantity of one plus epsilon to the minus one, or price times the quantity of one plus one over epsilon to the minus one. And so, or if we're thinking about, if we're realizing price elasticity of demand is negative, we can make, it, we can report it in, ab we can insert the absolute value and then we need this minus sign here. So there's two versions. One, if, we, if we're allowing epsilon, if we're realizing that epsilon is itself negative, or if we wanna take the absolute value of price elasticity of demand, then it needs to be price times the quantity of one minus one over the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand. And that is gonna be equal to marginal revenue. And that, that is our profit maximizing, that, this is our rule, our profit maximizing statement for, uh, for our monopoly. All right, now here's one of the things we wanna look in terms of the implications. So here's our demand curve. Here's our marginal revenue curve. Marginal revenue is everywhere below the demand curve. And notice at the portion of the demand curve where the price elasticity of demand is greater than one, marginal revenue is positive, meaning my marginal revenue curve is above zero, is above the horizontal axis. At the point of unit elasticity, at the midpoint of the demand curve, marginal revenue is equal to zero. It's gotta be that way, that's where total revenue is maximized. And at the bottom portion of the demand curve, marginal revenue is gonna be negative. Where demand is inelastic, marginal revenue is negative, right? So my comment, marginal revenue is equal to zero at the point that maximizes revenue. And for any shape marginal cost curve, the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost occurs at a quantity corresponding to elastic demand if the firm's, you know, if the firm's gonna be producing. Inelastic demand would imply marginal revenue is less than zero. So this is like our graphical argument of the fact that the monopoly never wants to produce where demand is inelastic. All right, so here's another 
manipulation of this formula. So marginal revenue equals price equals price times the quantity one plus one over elasticity is equal to marginal cost. We can uh, we can kind of stare at this for a second and and observe what's going on. Well, so not all monopolies are going to set high prices necessarily. Uh, firstly, a monopoly facing a horizontal demand curve would set price equal to mar marginal cost the same as the competitive firm would. Now that's sort of an extreme case, but part of what's happening is optimal pricing comes down to where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. The more elastic is the demand curve, the less the monopoly can raise its price without losing its sales. The more close subs, the more elastic is the demand. There could be it could be more close uh, cl close subs from related industries or something like that. This gives rise to what's called the learner index. So it's relating price and markup. So the ratio of the difference between price and marginal cost to price, or price minus marginal cost to price. So price minus marginal cost divided by price is equal to one over uh, our price elasticity demand. And so, and so why is this negative? Well, remember price elasticity demand is negative. So this whole right hand side is ultimately positive and this side is positive because price is is higher than marginal cost. So you've got something less than you got something less than one. So the learner index goes between zero and one. It'd be zero for perfect competition, then you can't raise the price, right? That happens when you have very elastic, uh, very elastic demand, right? So think of like one divided by like a million for the elasticity. That'd be one divided by a really big number is going to be a really small number, like close to zero. So that means the markup as a percentage of price has to be close to zero. And then when this is less than one, this requires operating on the inelastic portion of the demand curve. That won't work, right? So the firm's going to, or sorry, when it's greater than one, requires operating on the inelastic portion of the demand curve, and that won't work. The, the monopoly doesn't produce on the inelastic portion of the demand curve, only on the elastic portion. Oh, and as you're staring at this, you're like, wait a second, where did this formula come from? Oh, it is literally just what we had before. You just do an algebraic manipulation. And you can see this formula, this right here, marginal revenue or mar equals marginal cost equals price times the quantity of one minus one over the elasticity. That is our percentage markup formula. Price minus marginal cost over price is equal to min one over the negative of price elasticity demand. Right? All right, very good. So I'll go ahead and conclude here. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.